Die Maschine verliert sehr viel Energie. Ich bin sicher, dass es in der Natur einfachere Prinzipien der Energiegewinnung geben muss als dieses hier. Bitte, Herr Tesla, worauf warten Sie? Die ganze Natur liegt vor Ihnen. Niemand verbietet Ihnen etwas. Entdecken Sie das. Wir werden alle glücklich darüber sein. Ako se ovo nastavi, poludjet ću. Noćas nisam spavao. Minden hongot etzerosen holok. Jugoj meg Nikola je zato tu lijeza i kenšega da zelfog muli. Moja čula su bolesna. Sve čujem jače nego drugi ljudi. Betrachte vi in... Abendsonne glut, die gering umgebenen Hütten schimmern. Sie rückt und weicht. Der Tag ist überlebt. Dort eilt sich hin und fördert neues Leben. Frau Faust, das war doch doch mal nicht schön, wie bei euch. Bratet. Bratet, ich habe es. Mora teći natrag da bi bilo svjetlo. Magneti se moraju okretati kao zemlja oko sunca. Ovo su navojnice. Ako se obrnuto magnetno polje kreće u ovom pravcu, Struje će teći u ovom. Tu ne treba komutator. To je izmjenična struja. Antal! To je neslučajna energija. Ja sam pronašao. Vidim sve, vidim sve detalje. Taj motor je u harmoniji prirode. Vidim to. Est latum. Ofiarujem ci wszystkie moje myśli, słowa i uczynki, pracę i modlitwę. Pobłogosław ją, mój Boże. A wszystkie wymiarze ci chwalę. Tesla, z Paris. Born in Smiljan, Croatia, Austria. I jak wielka rodzina masz? Nie mam rodzina, nie mam rodzina. Dobrze. Jesteś wszystko w porządku. Dobrze do Unii Europejskiej. Mr. Tesla. Thank you very much, sir. All right, who's next? It's just like magic, Tom. Every time I hear that voice writer of yours, it just seems more wonderful than ever. Oh, thank you, Catherine. I've got a new name for it. The phonograph. What do you think? Whatever you call it, it's another one of your miracles. Maybe the greatest. You know, Bob, you're old friends, you and Catherine. I feel I can confide in you. I've got a hunch that this Niagara project could be about as important as anything I've ever done. You're the only man on earth who could pull it off. We can be sure of that. Sorry to bother you folks. 
Uh, yes, Al, what is it? It's that fellow from France. He was here yesterday, but you were too busy. Now he's back again. Well, I'm busy again. Tell him to try early next week. Poor man, don't put him off because of us. Well, it seems like every inventor in Europe is heading straight for America. He has a letter for you from the manager of your company in Paris. Oh. Well, okay, okay, uh, let him in. Mr. Tesla, Mr. Edison will see you now. Hi, young fella. This the letter? Yes, Mr. Edison. Well, it says here, this will introduce Mr. Nikola Tesla. Okay, Tesla, consider yourself introduced. Mr. Tesla, welcome to America. Thank you, miss. It's Mrs. I'm Mrs. Robert Johnson, and this is my husband. Maybe he'd rather see you alone. Oh, no, I would be happy if you would stay, Mrs. Johnson. What I would like to talk about can be of benefit to the whole of humanity. If you said that anywhere else, Mr. Tesla, I might not be inclined to believe you, but this is the birthplace of many wonderful things. Here we've become accustomed to seeing the impossible come true. You better mind your P's and Q's, Sally. This man is none other than the editor of Century Magazine. Well, I don't suppose Mr. Tesla has even heard of Century where he comes from. You're French, aren't you? I've been working there, but I was born in Liga. When who knows? Maybe Lika is another birthplace of wonderful things. What do you say, Tom? Never heard of the place. It's on the border between Austria and Turkey. Lika is the province. Smilian is the town. Well, you know what it says here? Uh, this is from the manager of my company in Paris. There's a uh, dear Mr. Edison. I know of only two really great men in this world. You are one of them. And young Nikola Tesla is the other. Okay, Tesla, let's come down out of the clouds. You got something to show me? Here, Mr. Edison. As you see, this is a rotating magnetic field. Well, what's it for? It cuts the coils at point A and induces a current which flows to the contact rings at point P. You expect that to start your motor? Of course. And there is no wasted power from long distance transmission. Uh, you seem to have forgotten something, Sonny. You don't have a commutator. There is no need for one. This is alternating current, Mr. Edison. Alternating? Yes. Using direct current, you'd need over a hundred power stations to light up the city of New York. And even then, the outskirts are left in darkness, because direct current cannot reach that far. But with my system, I guarantee that just one power station can light the whole city. And the whole state as well. We are throwing the power given to us by nature to the winds. Electric power, in its present form, is not only imperfect, it's unnatural. As I know you will agree, Mr. Edison, we are out of step with nature's harmony. With alternating current, we are talking about energy in an undreamt of degree. We will build new power stations and demolish old ones. It's a giant step forward. It will transform the whole world. Demolish all my power stations? Just because of this little motor of yours? But, Tom... You know what they call me, Tesla? They call me the king of electricity. I've transformed the world already. And everything I have accomplished has been based on direct electric current. You're heading up the wrong street with this thing, believe me. It's, it's, it's a dead end. Where are you going? I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to have taken up your time. Well, I thought you wanted to work for me. You have an original mind. Maybe even a brilliant one. Just because you made one little mistake doesn't mean I... I'm going to throw you out in your ear. 
I can use all the bright people I can get. You'll be here tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, sharp. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Goodbye. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of each other, Mr. Tesla. I hope so. So do I. He's working in that ditch over there. Well, let's go see him. There, that's Tesla. My name's Hiram Brown, president of Western Union Telegraph Company. Nice to meet you, Mr. Brown. I'm prepared to finance the development of your motor, Mr. Tesla. Are you prepared to finance all further work on alternating current as well? I hadn't really thought about that. Let's see what happens with the motor first. I will construct it only in my own workshop. Which you'd expect me to build for you? I'll build it, Mr. Brown. You just pay for it. You're pretty cocky, aren't you, Tess? They told me you would be. Exactly how much would you be needing? $30,000 and my own workshop. Well, then quit playing ditch digger and get up here. I'll make out a check. Ladies and gentlemen, to convince you that this theory will work, I'll turn off the direct current for a moment and we'll light up this hall with my system. Turn out the lights. This, ladies and gentlemen, is alternating current. You see how much power was produced with this small generator. And now imagine what it would be like if we had a, an enormous generator that could fill up this hall. Why, we'd be able to light the entire state of New York, more even than that. We could have power for the factories, all of public transportation, all of industry. Once we'd accomplished that, greater discoveries lie ahead, just as long as we keep in step with nature. Each new discovery will lead to another, and we will revolutionize life on our planet. Look, Mr. Tesla. Can you back up your theories with a few guarantees? You don't really believe that we put up our money without knowing the results. Can you show us evidence that this thing will work? Gentlemen, I can make no guarantees other than my discoveries. I am not an insurance company. You must take my word. You will have to rely on instinct, intuition, and imagination. And now. I shall switch back to direct current. Mr. Tesla, allow me to introduce myself. I'm George Westinghouse, president of, of Pittsburgh Electric. How do you do? I'd be happy if you'd have dinner with me at the Waldorf. That would be a pleasure, Mr. Westinghouse. Call me George. Call me Nicola. Nicola. All right. Delicious. So, to put it in a nutshell, uh, Mr. Tesla, 
I am prepared to buy all your patents for alternating current for a million dollars. The important thing is that you will be able to decide for yourself how your invention is to be used, while I will function as a kind of money bag. <laughs> An uh, open money bag. <laughs> what do you think of that? Bring me a dozen napkins, would you please? A dozen napkins, sir. Yeah, thank you, that's fine. I hope you find the dinner to your satisfaction, Mr. Tesla. I think you are being somewhat hasty, Mr. Westinghouse. Possibly. There could be no scientific progress without some risk. People have been known to risk their lives. What then is my money to that? You really sincerely believe in the project? <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I didn't. What if, on top of that million-dollar sum, I asked you to pay me one dollar for every horsepower we produce? I would agree. We'll put it in the contract. Don't be so quick to agree. You realize that we are talking about countless units of horsepower. And how about Edison? He won't take it without a fight, as long as he is opposed to it. How will you introduce our system? be able to manage it with your patents. The point is, you have truth on your side. Tell me the truth, Mr. Westinghouse. Are you helping me because you believe this will be of value to science and civilization, or are you in it for the profit? Listen to me, my friend. I'm an inventor myself, but I never forget that without money, I cannot put my inventions into practice. So, what if I do hope to make a little profit? I am happy you got angry. I'm beginning to believe you. Some Swiss cheese and an apple. And make sure the apple is washed with boiling water. A cream caramel, uh, some fruit, coffee, of course, and... Uh, cheers, Tesla, to your health. You seem to be drinking my wine. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're confusing me, Tesla. Can I assume, then, that we have an agreement that you accept? I was joking. What do you mean? No charge per horsepower. But I wasn't joking. You will get a dollar for every horsepower generated. You've got to be rich, Tesla, so that you can be free and independent. What's wrong, Tesla? Peaches, please take them away. They make me ill. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Fred. Fred. The peaches. Take the peaches away. No dessert of any kind. We are fortunate to have Mr. Thomas Alva Edison here in the capacity of advisor. It would be most helpful to hear his opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, gentlemen, I'll say this, that whether we pipe water to the plant or build the plant near Niagara Falls is a matter to be discussed. But there is only one system. Direct current has already been adopted throughout the world. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Westinghouse? Gentlemen, direct current is not 
the only system in existence. There is also Mr. Nikola Tesla's alternating current. It can guarantee the transmission of power over enormous distances. It is simple. It is practical. It is the system that Mr. Tesla himself has perfected, along with 40 registered patents. Now, I have here a report. Gentlemen, that system is nothing but pure fantasy. And dangerous fantasy at that. That is a subject for discussion, Mr. Edison. It's a subject I would be happy to discuss with you, Mr. Gentlemen, Edison. gentlemen, gentlemen. We are discussing a matter of great importance. I think it would be best to have an international competition. Mr. Edison, you are the best qualified among us to name the man who would head the panel of judges. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, there's only one such man in the world. I'm sure you'll all agree. Physicist, mathematician, and great inventor, Lord Kelvin of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, here in front of me you see two electrodes. When I switch on the electric current, there will be a tension of one million volts between them. That is alternating current. Now, if I touch the electrodes with my hands, what do you think will happen? Ladies and gentlemen, if my electric current kills, then I deserve to be its victim myself. Nicky, don't, please. Mr. Morgan is waiting in his study. He's here, Commodore. You don't shake hands, they tell me. Why? For reasons of health, Commodore. Edison here tells me you're always washing your hands 20 times a day, and every time there's got to be a fresh towel. I don't have to ask if you two know each other. Oh, we know each other all right. They also tell me you don't uh, take any coffee or tea. So what can I offer you? Some whiskey, perhaps. Oh. Makes you sound almost human. Tom, give your friend here some whiskey. You know, some people are sure that you're crazy. Others think you're a faker. Now, both those things could be true, and you still could be some kind of a genius. Sit down, Mr. Tesla. I'd like to know what makes you tick. You know what Edison says about genius? Yes, one of his pet quotations. Genius is 1% um, inspiration and 99% uh, perspiration. He says you don't perspire enough. And for a scientific conclusion, he says uh, you don't use any brain work at all. Instead, uh, how did you put it, Tom? Well, ask Tesla. 
According to him, uh, he says he gets mental pictures. Mental pictures, that's the word with everything complete, down to the smallest detail. Is that how it happened with that uh, uh, brushless, uh, commutatorless uh, motor of yours? Says here, Tom, that um, the whole thing just appeared to Mr. Tesla. Some kind of vision. It was really more uh, like a flash of lightning. And you got this vision, or flash, uh, suddenly, uh, in the middle of a poem uh, you have to be reciting out in the street somewhere in Hungary? Yes, it was Goethe. The what? He's a German author. I'll send you a translation, if you like. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Tesla. The motor was turning in a huge... Have your whiskey, Mr. Tesla. Oh, thank you very much. The motor spun in a huge whirlwind of electricity, a rotating magnetic field, tremendous energy produced by a balance of alternating currents. Alternating current. Yeah, he got the patent six years later, and every detail was just the way it uh, appeared to him in that first mental picture. Adam's got the whole story for me. What is that thing you're reading there? Uh, it's the file we put together on Mr. Tesla. I never go into anything blind, Tom. You know me well enough to know that. But says here, when he's still working for you, you gave Mr. Tesla a problem to solve for you. Well, what of it? I give my people problems all the time. Well, this one must have been important. Maybe something you couldn't work out for yourself? Who says so? Where'd you get that story? We talk to people in your shop. Oh. I could have solved that thing easily, but as it so happens, I was uh, busy with a lot of other problems at the time, like I always am. The way we heard it, you told Mr. Tesla if he'd work it out for you, you'd give him $50,000. And then when he did, you said he didn't understand the American sense of humor. That is not the reason we quarreled. I am not interested in money. Aren't you? Well, I am. The point is that you quit working for Edison. Now it's been suggested that you start working for me. Sit down, Tom. I haven't quite finished yet. <clears throat> yes, Tom? Frankly, Commodore, I'm beginning to wonder what the hell I'm doing here. Well, I didn't think it would be fair to hold this meeting without you. Well, am I right? It's about the steelworks in Pittsburgh. Well? We're still waiting for the electric power, Tom. They can't wait well, for it. neither can I. It's been over five months now since I submitted my plans to the committee. Mr. Tesla has some different ideas. Different? Uh, well, I guess that's one word for it. You know what he did at the Chicago World's Fair? It's all in here. Yes. Up to that time, there were no large polyphase generators in existence. I'd rather hear it from Mr. Tesla. No, sorry. Well, I took 24 500 horsepower generators, single phase generators, that is, coupled them all in pairs and then hooked them up so the circuits would be 90 degrees out of phase. Uh, translate that into English. It means I made the equivalent of 12 two phase generators, each with 1,000 horsepower. It was the first World Fair in history to be lit by electricity. <laughs> well, now, isn't that funny? Right up to this very minute, I was always under the impression that electric light was something that I invented. Of course. And now I find that Mr. Tesla here discovered it. Where the hell do you come off with a report like that on a subject that you couldn't even begin to comprehend? I just collected information, Mr. Edison. I certainly don't pretend to be an educated man of science. Educated? Like Tesla? You mean he is educated and I am not? No, Tom, nobody said that. Well, you don't have to say it. Everybody knows it. Well, we know you're a self-made man, and so is Tesla. He came to this country with four cents and a book of poetry. Yeah. Well, I never got near a university. I had to teach myself as I went along. Yes. And the first thing I learned was respect for the scientific process. Reasoning based on provable assumptions, controlled experimentation, trial and error. But your educated man of science, he does everything by guesswork. He doesn't even have ideas. He has hunches. No wonder he's gone haywire over this 
AC business. AC, alternating current, right, Tom? There's nothing right about it at all. Mr. Edison's whole system has been based right from the beginning on direct current. Tesla? Despite all evidence, he has convinced the system of alternating current will never work. Oh, I see. A man of visions and lightning flashes feels that Thomas Edison is suffering from delusions. Simmer down, Tom. Tell us about Frankfurt. Frankfurt, Germany, Tom. Or don't you know what happened in Frankfurt? Adams, tell Mr. Edison what happened in Frankfurt, Germany. A man called Olivo and another man called... The hell with the names. Just tell them what they did. They have just managed to transmit electricity over a distance of 160 kilometers. And they were using Tesla system. And that's over in Europe, for God's sake. We've got Tesla right here under our noses. You get together with General Electric. I'll take care of the financial side. We're going to build that power station in Niagara right away. And uh, what system are you going to use? Well, Tom, what's wrong with giving it a try? But it's a useless complication. That's what's wrong with it. And besides that, it's dangerous. And if I had my way... I'd have the goddamn thing prohibited by law. Oh, I hope you, you aren't leaving. We haven't finished our card game. Just don't slam the door. He does it every time. My friend Edison's a stubborn man, Tesla. He's also the greatest inventor in the history of the world. And if you can prove him wrong, just once. I won't say I'll be happy. But I'll tell you this. You and I are in business. Ladies and gentlemen, America has today put into operation her first electric power station generating alternating current. We must thank all those who have helped to create this power station. However, ladies and gentlemen, we should not forget that without Nikola Tesla, the great visionary and inventor, none of this would exist. The celebration I've been waiting for. Bravo, Nick. Bravo. <laughs> we'll speak to them, Nick. Your audience is waiting. When all is said and done, this power station is not terribly important. It simply makes practical use of theories we have long known about. Rather than congratulate ourselves, we should all feel ashamed that it was not built earlier. The real work is yet to come. Now we must destroy distance. Our senses tell us about things that are close by. To know what is happening far away, we must be able to transmit scenes from other places over long distances. Pictures, the news, energy. And why not matter too? Now we must liberate thought. We must set it free of limitations that space and time impose on it, and yet keep its principal characteristics. Now and in future centuries, here on Earth and thousands of light years into the unknown. Attraction and repulsion, Catherine, a strange effect. Very stimulating and exciting. 
Electricity and magnetism, George, are unique forces in nature. How are you, Nick? Nick, please listen to me. I'm, uh, well, I'm at the end of my rope. There's nothing left for me but to ask for your help. Nick, there's a crisis on. Pullman has laid off 4,000 workers in Chicago. Yesterday, the National Guard was out shooting people down in the streets. I can't get any more credit, Nick. Everybody is pulling out. They're charging me with a debt of over $10 million. Now, that's the money I owe you, Nick. Remember, a dollar for every horsepower. General Electric is behind it all. Morgan wants to swallow me up, so does Edison. I can't let him do it, Nick. My company is my whole life. And I thought, Nick, if we could share the loss a little... This is the contract, George. Yes. Nick, I can't let you do that. I owe you that money. It's yours. You don't owe me anything, George. When nobody listened, you believed in me. You held out your hand when others turned their backs. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. My friend. That was generous, Nicky. Maybe a little too generous. Of course you want to help George Westinghouse when he's in such trouble, but how can you just tear up ten million dollars? I don't have a family, Catherine. I just need to get on with my work. All that money would only get in my way. Put it to the right. Now to the left. Can you make it go down to the end? And then back toward us? But where are the wires, Mr. Tesla? By this time, Mr. Adams, I thought you understood. Well, I'm afraid I don't. So what do you want me to tell the Commodore? Just tell him what you've seen. And about the wires, tell him there aren't any. Tesla, uh, this little boat of yours, Adams has been telling me all the tricks it could do. The same thing will work on a bigger scale, you can actually move energy, electrical energy, from one place to another. You can take the power you harness from Niagara and move it to my steelworks in Pittsburgh without any wires at all. There is no limit to the possibilities. Communication over great distances. Anywhere, Europe even, and without using cables. Well, I didn't call you on the phone, Adams. Let me hear it from Tesla. Ships at sea, Tesla? Everything, the human voice, pictures. They're all just electrical impulses. And uh, what's this place where you want to go and work on it? Colorado Springs. It's rich in natural electricity. Look, Tesla, you fix it so I can send words without wires from one city to another and over the ocean without a cable. Just give me that and you can go to Colorado Springs or Timbuktu. The sooner you get started, the better.
was one promise with all the damn visions and lightning flashes of yours, one hard promise I thought I could count on. I was going to be able to send messages to distant places without any wires. And now, sure enough, the thing's been invented, but not by you, Tesla, no. By some Italian here. Marconi. Whatever. Well, he's made some kind of box. He's talking to England with it, and I've got to buy patents from him. What if he did steal it from you? You're not the only one with ideas, you know. There's a, there's a Jew over in Germany. Einstein. The whole scientific world is talking about that new theory of his. And in Paris? Uh, what's that about Paris? They have split the atom. Whatever that means. It could mean a whole new source of energy. Such energy is created by destroying natural elements. That is a serious crime against nature, and one day it's going to bring on catastrophe. The world is at a crossroads right now. And if we pass up this chance, we shall be held responsible by future generations. Chance? Chance for what? Commodore, we send energy, all energy, to the outer shell of the Earth, the ionosphere. Energy from the sea, the wind, energy from the sun. We no longer need to burn or destroy anything. We simply take what already exists and put it to our use in unlimited quantities. Imagine powering your home, your automobile, with a cheap and simple receiver, the size of a, a bread basket. No fossil fuels consumed, no smoke choking up our skies, no wires to obscure our view. I could do this. Adams. Yes, Commodore. You've seen all this? Yes, Commodore. One single source of energy. That's what this means. Right, Tesla? Yes, that is right. And anyone can draw on it, anyone in the world. The Earth's outer shell, remember, goes around the whole planet. Yes. Power will belong to everyone, like the air we breathe. There's uh, some financial details we ought to go over. Tesla, I won't keep you any longer. I know how anxious you are to get back to your work. We'll send this stuff on to you. Oh, I forgot you. Never shake hands. That man could turn the world upside down and stand it on its head. Yes, I do believe he could. It's a wonderful prospect. Wonderful? Listen, if that lunatic can really do what he says he can do, have you any idea what's going to happen? No, sir. One source of energy, that's what's going to happen, just one. So anybody, anybody at all, can just stick an antenna up in his backyard and hook into it, and we won't have anything left to sell but antennas. We'll be producing the power, and anyone who feels like it can milk our cow for free. Well, no, thank you, Mr. Tesla. I'm not contributing to that charity. Write him a letter, Adams. Have it ready for me to sign in the morning. Yes, Commodore. What shall I tell him? Tell him... Tell him goodbye. <laughs> 